Okay, so we're going to use the um, the Life View software here to do some analysis of data captured on the race car. Um, the data that's captured is uh, configured using a separate tool to this this product. Um, that's a tool called Life Config, um, and in Life Config you can specify um, the channels that you want to um, log while the car is being driven uh, and the frequency at which those channels are being logged as well which is all quite important when you've only got a small amount of memory in the ECU you need to be careful what you do capture and the frequency that you capture obviously the faster you capture a channel the more data it uses but that's that's all taken care of separately this tool here is life view um, it's the latest version um, and basically across the top here you've got your usual Windows style menus and then down here we've got a series of worksheets uh, which I've set up over time to give me a, a quick view as to the health etc of the vehicle um, and there's nothing showing at the moment because I've not got a file loaded so I'll click on file and then load um, and we'll go into the 2021 season downloaded data um, and I'll pull in some data from Pembury uh, this is my first time to run we'll do an OK let it load uh, and uh, if we now choose a work tab for example battery this now shows for example um, during the course of a run the um, performance of the alternator when it's been switched on and off um, so what you got here is the engine RPM which is usually a good indicator as to whether you're looking at the data that's actually been sampled during a run down here the tick over is quite low cars obviously sitting there waiting to be driven and here you can see the RPM is increasing so this activity here is when the car is being driven if I right click keep the right mouse button down and then scroll across and then release the right button it then zooms in so this now shows the engine RPM during a run um, and it shows down here the battery voltage uh, during the run and up here it shows the alternator state so this is just one of the work tabs we've got some um, I've got many I've set up over time. We've got air temperatures. Um, it shows the uh, ambient air temperature, uh, which drops as the vehicle starts accelerating. We've got the air charge temperature. That's the temperature of the air that's being compressed by the turbo before it enters the um, plenum. Down here again, we've got RPM. RPM is one of the most common ones that you tend to use um, on each work tab because it, again, it gives you that window it shows you when the vehicle's actually being driven um, I've got one for brakes this shows brake pressures I'll right click on that and do an auto scale and same with that one brake pressure rear brake pressure front so down here I'm obviously coming down to a corner what we'll do is we'll make a uh, track map and we'll do an OK that now appears down here on the left and if we then click on the map we can actually see it's positioned the line to show you whereabouts on the run we're at um, you can see down here throttle position was full because I'm accelerating away from the line I then come off the brakes uh, sorry come off the throttle transition onto the brakes you can see I'm hitting the brake pedal pretty hard uh, only getting 30 bar which is a bit disappointing it should be a lot more than that I'll just zoom in on that section there um, so throttle off brakes on allow the vehicle to slow down we get down to the corner uh, we roll off the brakes there's a bit of dead time here as we actually go around the corner um, and then we are starting to reapply throttle here we give it a bit of a squirt we have to come off because we're not confident that the car's not going to go around the corner without the tail end breaking away we get around the corner fully and i'm starting to give it more throttle and then here i'm back onto wide open full throttle again the car starts accelerating so again i'm using this i'm actually using the scroll button now to to, to scroll in and out the data let's just refocus on that section there so this shows brakes over the duration of a lap um, exhaust gas temperature this is quite a busy graph um, this top section here is in two separate graphs it shows the exhaust gas temperature EGT1 that's the exit uh, from the turbo uh, and then these channels 1, 2, 3 and 4 show the thermocouples uh, EGT sensors um, on each uh, manifold port and you can see the EGTs match each other very closely they're all within a few degrees of each other and the exhaust temperature is about where are we there about 250 degrees lower so it just shows the turbos actually 
using 250 degrees of temperature as energy to actually spin the uh, spin the turbo around. Um, and then down here we've got uh, fuel final primary. This just basically shows the alterations that the ECU is making to the four fuel injectors, one per cylinder. And again, down here, it's looking at the changes it's making for the um, ignition for each cylinder. Um, events, this is an interesting one. This shows you all the events that the ECU is recording as the vehicle's being driven. It shows the alternator state, the position of the calibration switches, um, pedal position, whether that's okay or not, whether the fan's on or off, um, the gear blip requests, these are quite interesting ones to, to look at to try and work out where we can save a bit of time during gear changes. Not control active, um, not shut down cylinder, that's if you've had knock events uh, and it, um, it panics, it then closes down cylinders, that's a nice steady zero. Launch RPM and the launch switch. Uh, we've also got Got one for fuel, another very busy one. This shows the alternator state, the direct injection pressure on the cylinder head pump, um, which is usually around 200 bar. Um, the lift pump, this is the Bosch pump that's in the fuel tank uh, behind the driver's seat. This is the tank that's providing the, um, uh, the fuel to the DIP pump on the cylinder head. It shows what gear we're in, lambda, should be a nice constant 0.855 while we're giving it hard throttle and it spikes as and when the um, uh, if I change gear or if I lift off lambda obviously just goes a bit crazy but it, when I'm accelerating hard it's usually a good, good steady 0 0.85 0 0.86 all the way across uh, lateral G that's just to show the effect of the uh, g-forces on the fuel whether I'm getting surge whether it's caused by g-force uh, rpm and voltage battery uh, that is an interesting one because I'm turning the alternator on and off to save power when the alternator's off um, the battery voltage drops and the lift pump pressure also drops it's not significant but I'm keeping an eye on it um, there's another one here for fuel and ignition another very busy one um, these are really just for diagnosing issues with the car if we have any uh, this is the clutch switch uh, and it shows the acceleration when I pull away from the line. So if I go down here, you can see I release the clutch. The lateral G starts to drop. I'm pulling almost 2G as the car is accelerating. Um, GPS, let's just scroll back out again. Let's just get back into the run. GPS data, whether we've got any issues with that. Gear changes. Yeah, I love, love looking at this one. This one's really interesting. This shows you the... Um, all that's going on with the gearbox strategy when we change gear. So if I look at a series of upshifts, you can see we've got gear cut requests, we've got the cut state, we've got the gear downshift output, gear shift state, gear upshift output. It's amazing. This is the actual pulse to the um, to the actuator on the back of the gearbox. Uh, scroll back out again. Uh, grip levels. That's just trying to show me where I'm exploiting the grip on the corners, or if I'm not. Uh, intercooler temperatures, this shows the ambient air temperature, air going into the turbo, air charge temperature, that's air coming out of the turbo, manifold pressure, engine RPM and vehicle speed. Um, knock, that looks very busy doesn't it, but it's actually, it's in a really good state. We're getting, obviously getting uh, knock um, on the cylinders, uh, all engines do, but it's not significant enough to actually trigger any ignition retard, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, that shows it's running very, very healthy um, uh, tune at the moment. Lambda again, that's for checking the uh, status of the of the lambda uh, launch comparison. This allows me to look at um, all sorts of stuff for launch to try and tune the settings to try and make the car go um, accelerate even better. Launch slip, um, a similar one again. It gives me more insight as to what's happening as the car's going through the launch phase. Uh, launch check is another one, so I haven't made my mind up which is the most useful of those three at the moment, but I'm just kind of working on them. Um, oil pressure and oil temperature, they're both very good. It shows the temperature when I start a run. Um, if I just do a channel add and put the RPM in there, RPM, and then zoom in again. 
you can actually see that the oil temperature starts at about what's that, 67 degrees and at the end of the run it's gone up to about 99 degrees that's quite normal there's no oil cooler on the car um, and then engine oil pressure that's with a good constant three bar which is very good um, rpm traction control spin and drive driven speed i've been messing around with stuff on that one race render this is for outputting to the um uh, race render software it's the channels that i like to display such as the yaw and the speed and, and that type of thing when i'm doing the video overlays there's a second race render i must be messing around with different formats steering wheel angle versus your versus traction control um, this gives me an indication as to how well the traction control system is working whether it's interfering with my driving or not suspension this is the four um potentiometers that i've fitted to the dampers it actually shows you as the vehicle speed increases just close that window um, the car drops and obviously the car starts at uh, zero millimeter and when i'm doing 120 mile an hour it's dropped by almost 20 millimeters at the rear and at the front it's around 20 millimeters it, it's um it's quite interesting to look at the effects of downforce if i make a change to the wings it obviously has a direct effect on the amount of compression on the suspension um, they're a bit crude these they're not super accurate but they give me a good indication as to whether the changes are working or not um, switches this just shows the status of the various switches calibration switch clutch switch launch rpm launch switch paddle switch on the steering wheel traction control switch and the tune switch so i can look and if it's a particularly good start i can then go back over the data and find out uh, why was it a good start and i can then find out which of the settings i've changed on the steering wheel controls to lower launch rpm etc uh, and then keep a log of those good starts and then try and put that uh, into more effect on later starts during the day traction control that's just sharing uh, all sorts that's quite a busy one isn't it um, basically showing um, things like how much wheel spin we're getting the vehicle speed the torque ignition retail that's being applied by the traction control system uh, should uh, traction uh, control be needed it shows the spin error uh, and the spin target and then these are the two values i'm working on the spin target is for example 11 11.7 that says allow 11.7 percent wheel spin um, and if there's no wheel spin then tc spin error is zero as tc spin error increases that's where that value then changes um, traction control data that's so i can export it to excel traction again another one i've been looking at is trying to get the traction control sorted out torque ignition retard that just shows you where the ecu is applying um, uh, retardation to the ignition timing that's usually if i add the gear coincides with me making gear changes so it looks like it's got a lot to do but it's actually just um it's just responding to gear changes in that graph uh, water temperature that's engine rpm and engine coolant temperature wheel speed yeah i've had a few problems with the front left but it looks like it was okay on that run uh, all the graphs look pretty good on the rear wheel speed you can actually see spikes which is wheel spin when i change gear and your versus speed again this just shows you whether i'm making optimum use of the uh, of the amount of grip uh, when I'm driving around the circuit. So that basically is uh, it. There's an awful lot you can do. Uh, to be honest, it's a bit overwhelming. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's um, there's lots you can do and you should be doing on the event. Whether you get time to do it or not is a completely different matter. Um, but that's just a little bit of a brief overview as to what we can do with the live data.